and Tepe now sets off on his journey <clears throat> alone. I swear for this entire chapter, it just felt like I want to play that song, like, I walk alone, because that's Tepe's pretty much story right now in chapter two. So one month has um, gone through since the last chapter, and he has found no survivors. The ones that he found have, like, either been dead, or he's cremated them. It was kind of really fucked up, because he didn't even, throughout this whole time, he did not even find the bodies of his classmates or Subasa. So I guess he's still probably out there. That's Subasa. I'm still saying that Subasa might be there. Probably the other ones are, are dead. But when he just finds a goblin, like, he just keeps, like, beating the shit out of them at, like, the first few pages. Keep using his, like, special technique, Eye and Fire. And it shows that he can, like, transform certain parts of him. Like, um, his arms or the ears, like... And it does show that he does have limits. Um, if he doesn't like cool down, he will. He will say he will literally melt his arm off. So it's like the um, the iron on his body does not stay there to keep his arms uh, safe for long. But if he has something like a rain or pond to sit in, then he's pretty much sure. Because I showed why I'm the first time when he went absolutely ballistic. And it just was really sad because it looked. He looked like just a solo hunter, just like on his task, just talking to himself and he really misses his people and it's just really super th uh, sad although he was just be trying to be all jokey about it and for the most part he was like really getting tired so he was like fuck I've got to miss like all these like freaking guys I've got to try and avoid all this shit midway through the chapter he finds like oh I smell human blood like and he finds them and they're being completely destroyed like a family and two kids completely ripped to pieces and it just seems that that pie is like, I don't care anymore. I'm just losing all hope. He hasn't spoken to a single human being in one full month. I mean, that isn't a lot uh, compared to like some people, what some people go through. But still, like you go, you do really miss that human contact if you're just in a desolate, destroyed world. So this uh, kid already has got a lot of freaking, like, on the mental stage, he's already looks like he's going to fucking scream and just give up all hope. Like, and then he just like, just fucking screams. He's like, I don't care what happens to me anymore. And he just lets off this massive fire pulse like that and just fucks them all up. And he's just where he's like up to a point where he looks like he's now about to pass out. Like, he meets this rabbit girl and she just starts talking to him, yo, how's it going? Like that. And this is not as dark as the first chapter. The first chapter was amazing. But it was definitely interesting to see like the lonely dark turn that the series went with this uh, chapter. I hope that this does well. I really do. It would be nice something for a new jump in there. Whether or not I keep reviewing them, uh, it would depend. Like, uh, I, I do like um, Iron Knight a lot. Like, I do like so far the characters. But seeing how it's going to go, if it's going to keep that dark tone to it, or if it's going to go something completely with a rabbit girl, I have no idea. But I also did see the one shot as well, which was really awesome, really dark and gloomy. You know, Dark Avenger, Iron Knight, some awesome Batman shit. But overall, I still think this chapter was a really good one. Um, just not as good as the first chapter. But let me know what you think in the competition below. Do you think Iron Knight will still retain its quality? Do you think it will even stay in jump? That's all me. Everyone, so thank you very much for watching. Remember, shout out, Panda. Sign out, and I'll see you guys next time.